Welcome to Monster Kid Theater and tonight's presentation of The Creeper. child. I just came in to see if you were all right. Why do you have that? This one. I, I was cleaning it. I was just about to take it back where it belonged. That's strange. What's strange, my dear? I was dreaming about the gun. I was dreaming I went and got it. <laughs> Dreams are always strange. At least that's the way they seem. In their peculiar way, though, they have their own kind of logic. Do you remember why you wanted the gun? Not exactly. It's just as it's always been. That something's after you? No, dear. You're home now. Nothing can harm you here. You must believe that, child. I try, Daddy. Really, I do. I know you do. Go back to sleep now. You're safe here. Perfectly safe. Good night, Nori. Good night, Jack.
need the serum. Please be careful. I'll help you. Where do you want to, miss? Um, over here in this box will do. Well, it's a relief to know that got here safely. I wish I could say the same. I told you to be careful. <laughs> what do you got in here? Some escaped atoms or something? I'll bet you have it there. <laughs> Nora, will you give me a hand with that? Nora! Sorry, Gwen. What was it you said? I said, will you give me a hand, please? Doubts, doubts, doubts. That's all I've been hearing for the past few months. What difference does it make so long as it's the truth? When Galileo discovered the rotation of the Earth, did he hide the fact just because Elias commanded the sun to stop? No. You may be right, Jim. Logically right. But morally, in my catalog of values, man comes first. Without man, there wouldn't even be a science. The trouble with you is, you're not a scientist. You're a philosopher. In our world, there's no place for philosophers. That's precisely what's wrong. There's no place for the philosopher. The man whose sole function it is just to think. How wonderful to have nothing to do but just to think. Doctor. Dr. Borden. The serum, something's happened. Smashed. Every one of them. Construction looks almost too complete to be accidental. Doesn't it, Lester? I can't understand it. We packed the serum together, Dr. Borden, you and I. Came in the same ship with us. We supervised the loading and unloading. Perhaps it's best the accident happened, Jim. You know how I feel about the direction this has been taking. And you know how I feel. You can't intend to go on. I do. But you don't have the serum to work with. I'll make more. It'll take over a year of inoculations and cultures with new cats to bring the serum to the point we had it here. I don't intend to start from scratch. We can use the same animals we used in the Indies. You mean you'll bring those cats here? Why not? I should never let you talk me out of bringing them. But you have everything in your notes, Daddy. You recorded every step of the experiment, all the information you need to publish your report. Why bring those animals here at all? Don't tell me you still have that ridiculous aversion to cats. It isn't ridiculous. It... I hate to be reminded of that horrible place. That's all over now, Nori. You were delirious, darling. Hallucinations induced by your fever. It'll be different here. Come now. Give us a smile. In the interest of science, of course. <clears throat> Nora's right, Jim. I have a complete record of our work. Let's publish what we've learned and let it go with that. Don't tell me you can open the door to a great discovery, actually stand there on the threshold and not go any further? Jim, please. Granted, we're the only men to introduce phosphorescence into living cell tissue. Nevertheless, it hasn't been the great boon to surgery we'd expected. Well, there's something bigger than that. Can't you see it? I see it all too clearly. It is big. Too big. We can't control it. We'd be releasing energies that would result only in mutations, monstrosities, and death. We can't benefit mankind. We can only do immeasurable harm. That's why I beg you, Jim. Let well enough alone. Miss Rustrum, get a wire off to Andre Dusso right away. Tell him to find all the experimental cats he can. And tell him to send them here as soon as possible. Yes, sir. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, Les. It isn't that I'm trying to run this show. But in this case, I honestly feel that you're wrong. I've got to follow through the way I see it. What are you going to do? There's one thing he seems to have forgotten. I have the notes on our last three months of work. Dr. Reed, 
Nora. The handsome side is next door. My, how you've grown. Let's see, how many years has it been now? Four at least. You haven't changed a bit, Doctor. What's this doctor stuff? My name's John, remember? <laughs> Gee, it's good to see you. Same here. Still have that schoolgirl crush on me? Oh, please, now. <laughs> Tell me, Doctor, John, are you still working on allergies? Naturally. Is there anything else in the world? <laughs> you research men are all alike. And when do you expect to get around to me? Gwen! <laughs> when did you arrive? Weren't you going to let me know you were here? I was just in my way. A girl generally likes to run her fingers through her hair and fix her face first. It's been a long time. Too long. I'd almost forgotten. And I was worried. You practically stopped writing. Mm, we were awfully busy. Are we still meant for each other? As soon as I finish here. Hurry it up. I need you. All those people with allergies need you. So that's the reason you want to marry me. Why don't you girls come over to my place? I'll fix you up a nice hot cup of Dr. Reed's special brew. <laughs> Ladies, this is my associate, Dr. Van Clark. He won't admit it, but he's a world authority. Don't let that impress you, though. Just call him Van or whatever you like. This is Nora Cavaney, daughter of our brilliant colleague next door. How do you do? How do you do? And Gwen Runstrom. She's the technician I've been raving to you about. How do you do? Dr. Reed's special drip coffee. Coffee, Van? No, thanks. Sugar? Are you sure? What do you mean, am I sure? About this alleged sugar. You want me to run a test on it? How about some cream? Right here in the blood bank. Hmm? No, thanks. By the way, how'd you like to see the rest of our staff? Good. Bring your coffee. This is our family. It started six months ago with just those two. And now look. Oh, remember him? Creeper. With the mice around, I didn't think it'd work out. He's terrific with the mice. Just hold them in check when they get loose. Mm, Creeper's very intelligent. You're not kidding. Sometimes I get the horrifying impression he's smarter than I am. <laughs> Come over here and meet my favorite characters. See the fat one? That's Gertrude. She's a wonderful mother. That skinny one's Ophelia. She has a suicide complex, poor thing. That chap who's looking at you so brazenly, he's a regular old rip. See the plump one? That's Sandra. She's a cute one. Nothing, John. What do you mean, nothing? People just don't drop glasses and run out of offices. Or maybe it's me. Do you think I have five o'clock shadow? She's just a little upset. What about? Overwork, I suppose. You know how we all get sometimes. We'd better see how she is. She's all right. It's nothing, really.
There was nothing there, Nori, dear. You were having a nightmare. Everyone tells me I'm dreaming of... <laughs> I'd just gone to bed. There couldn't have been anything. Didn't you hear the cat? No. He was out on the front lawn. Are you sure? Uh, try not to think of these fantastic things, sweetheart. Come now, you must get back to bed. That's a good girl. Yeah. You know, honey, what you need is a nice long vacation. Away from theories and test tubes and guinea pig cats. I could use a vacation like that myself. Now, you just imagine the prettiest place you can. Go over them all very carefully and select the nicest one you can think of. Something with warm sunlight and green waters and red tile roofs, perhaps. Hmm? And you tell me about it in the morning, and I promise to send you there. Good night, Nori. Good night, Daddy. for Creeper. I can't find him. Anybody in yet? It's pretty early for them. No, nobody's in there, but the door is open, so I go in. I wish you wouldn't do that, Pam. If anybody happened to walk in while you were there, they might think you were snooping or something. They've been pretty hush-hush about what they're up to. Where was Creeper? I don't know. I didn't find him. What have you got there? Oh, I can't sleep. I get here early. Experiment. On what? This has nothing to do with what we're working on, has it? I do this for myself. I thought we were partners, then. Yes, we're partners. Oh, I just fool around. Experiment. Nothing important. Gives me something to do when I can't sleep. I'm sorry I was short. Still friends? Still friends. Did you check that McCormick report? Oh, no, not yet. Well, let's have a look at it. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Nora, good morning to you. Am I intruding? Not at all. Where have you been? Busy. I... I'm sorry I ran out on you like that the other day. Think nothing of it. I know that mice affect some women like that, but I didn't think that'd bother you. Oh, it wasn't exactly the mice. It was... Well, I... That reminds me. Just exactly what are Borden and your father doing? They thought it was possible to illuminate certain organs of the body. It would have been a great boon to surgery and internal medicine. Would have been. Didn't it work out? I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure not the way Dad expected. He says it's too dangerous to handle and, well, I don't think he wants to continue. What does Borden think? Here he is. Where do you suppose he was? Oh, probably at the end of the hall. He loves those little guinea pigs. But they're bad for him. They're so full of flu germs. Would you like to hold him, miss? What's wrong? But he's so nice and gentle. He likes ladies. Blame! Get it out of here. Oh. I'm sorry. They affect me that way. I can't help it. That's really why you ran out that first day you came here, isn't it? Why did you let me think it was mice and jitters? To be afraid of cats like that. It, it's so hard to explain. How about a cup of hot chocolate? It's more relaxing than coffee. Thanks. How did it start? I mean, have you had this particular fear all your life? No, it began when we moved to the West Indies. I never could get used to the sticky heat and the feeling that there were creeping things all around me. You're very imaginative, aren't you? 
Very. I guess it got the best of me. That and never knowing when I might put my foot down on something coiled and hissing. It seems as if you were living in a perpetual state of Halloween. Is that how the cats came into it? I was about to tell you. The natives believe in metempsychosis. They believe they took the shape of cats after death. I've never felt too much at ease with cats, and right about then, my life became a rather horrifying round of squirming cats and hypodermic needles and serum bubbling in bottles. Of all of us there, I was the only one who caught the fever. I was in a delirium for weeks. One night in particular. Everything that happened to me became magnified in my dreams. And I can still remember seeing the most horrible things. Yesterday she was fine, she was happy, but tonight she turned very white and swift she died. I'd better go see. I might still be able to do something. I think we've had enough remembering for one day. How about having dinner with me tonight? I made you remember unpleasant things. It's only right I make you forget them. I'll take you to a little place I save for extra special occasions. I'll pick you up this evening. Dr. Reed. Hiya, Wong. Very well, Doctor. I have a booth all set up for you. Thank you. How's business? Pretty good. Bought myself a new car. All those town and country jobs. Good. Is anything wrong, Nora? Not exactly. The place just seems... Strange. You can say what you like about the joint, so long as you like my food. You don't want a menu, do you, Doc? No, you dream it up, Wong. Right-ho. Wong brings out special dishes of his. Gwen's mad about them. Do you come here with her very often? We used to come here quite often. Since she came back, though, she's been rather busy. Tell me, did anything happen down there in the island? Why do you ask? I don't know. She seems different, changed. You've changed, too. For the better, I hope. In some ways, yes. And in others? Have. 
Perhaps not. I might have been mistaken. Nora, I want to help you. Won't you let me? There's nothing you can do, John. Please take me home. Hello. Oh, yes, Doctor. No, we didn't call. Not that I know of. Is Jim there? No, he isn't, Doctor, but I expect him any minute. Shall I have him call you? Oh, I see. Good night. Dr. Cannon, he called. Well, what did he want? He was pretty upset. It seems that somebody called him and made like a cat. He's getting senile. This afternoon, I asked him for his final notes. He said he'd either mislaid them or lost them. He couldn't remember which. Personally, I think he's holding out on me. What do you think? I wouldn't know. Oh, you have it. How did it test? Exactly the same as the culture we lost in the movie. And we're in good shape to continue. I should say so. Good evening, Doctor. Do you don't mind? I saw him come in here as I was leaving. You know, he's done that several times. He impresses me as a very weird sort of fellow. I think he's harmless. Would you order me some glass tubing, dear? Three-eighths inch. Thanks. Did you have a good time last night? How did you know? Did he take you to Ah Wong's? Don't misunderstand me, Nora. It's not John I'm concerned about, it's you. I'm afraid that in your present condition, you might so easily misunderstand kindness for something else. He feels sorry for you, Nora, as we all do. Sorry? Why should anyone feel sorry for me? I wouldn't say this, except that part of the cure is in facing it. You know, dear, you've always been a rather neurotic type, and... The trip to the West Indies doesn't seem to have helped you. In fact, it... Well, I hate to suggest this, but... Don't you think it's time you consulted a psychiatrist? Of course, I, I wouldn't feel qualified, but... If I did hazard a diagnosis, I should say that there are definite symptoms of... Schizophrenia. Tell me, Nora... Don't you ever find yourself awakening from some horribly realistic dream in which you're another person? Perhaps not even another person, an animal, a... a cat. And don't you ever feel an awakening that it wasn't a dream, but true? That you are two separate beings. One, the Nora we know, and the other... No. No, it's not true. Who told you? I swear I did. What are you talking about, Nora? Andre, he was here. Naturally. He just arrived with the cats. We sent for the cats, don't you remember? I'd forgotten. I'm sorry. I, I didn't expect to see you. Why not, Miss Nora? Who else can feed the cats and take care of them like me? 
All right, Andre. Come on, Miss Rundstrom. We've got a lot of work to do. My nerves are all on edge. I feel I, I'm losing my mind. Daddy, can't you help me? There. There, my dear. He's dead? Why does this always happen to me? Never did with Cavanaugh. Hello. Don't you realize it's customary to knock? I'm sorry. What goes on? It's highly confidential. We're very busy. Please go. Is Nora around? She had one of his spells. Her father took her home. Here. So you decided to sober up and come home, huh? How about a nice cold saucer of milk? Just a thing for the morning after. Morning, Van. What's the matter? Have a tough night? What you need is to go out on the town. Like Creeper. See this? Huh? 
I'm Inspector Fenwick. Is it about this? Mm -hmm. You're Dr. Reed? That's right. And you're Dr. Van Glock? I am. What happened? That's what I'm trying to find out. Do you know anything about it? Only what I've read here. Tell me, why are you holding Miss Cavaney? Friend of yours? Yes, she is. Well, she was found unconscious a couple blocks from the house. There was blood, the old man's blood, on her hands, under her nails. You don't think she could have done anything like that? I understand she's been ailing lately. Been rather nervous and unstrung. The other girl who works in there, Miss, uh, what's her name? Brunstrom. Yeah, that's it. According to her, the Cavani girl is practically a mental case. Nora hasn't been well, I'll admit, but she's far from being mad. Gwen had no right to make any such statement. It's a free country. She was just giving her opinion. Where is Miss Cavani now? Uh, jail hospital. Could I see her? Not until after the state alienists have seen her. Ask me again tomorrow. Uh, what kind of work are they doing next door? I couldn't say exactly. Something to do with cellular phosphorescence. Who is the uh, strange-looking character they have in there with them? Uh, Andre something or other. He takes care of the cats. I see. Well, I guess that'll be all for now. Unless you can think of something else. Might interest you, the Cavani girl kept saying a black cat was after her. That ring any bells? Not particularly, though I understand she has a fear of cats. If she were emotionally upset, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Well, I'll be seeing you. Excited, aren't we? Well, after all, I... What do you mean, after all? Naturally, I'm concerned about her, as I would be about anyone I knew. Come now. What is this? I'm sorry, John. I, I'm all on edge. Nora's staying with me. Dr. Borden got a trained nurse in with her. Well, that's better. How about taking in a movie and dinner tonight? I, I feel like relaxing. All right, Gwen, what time? You don't want to go. I didn't say I didn't want to go. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Please don't try to be difficult. You'd rather see her, is that it? Please, Gwen. I'll pick you up in half an hour. Don't bother. You mean too much to me to be a burden to you. I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe you'll be in a better mood. I'll be working tomorrow. And I'll be working day after tomorrow. From now on, I'll always be working. It's all I'm good for anyway. Work, work, work. Might as well resign myself to it. They say that's as good an escape as any. Yes? Is Miss Ranstrom in? I'm Dr. Reed. She hasn't been in all evening, Doctor. Is that you, John? How thoughtful of you. Beautiful. Here, maybe. Put them in water, please. <laughs> well, uh, sit down, John. I... I'm sorry about what happened. Let's not talk about it. Everything going well at the lab? How's Van? You should have seen him this morning. A mouse got loose and he started chasing him. Then Creeper joined him in. I'm sorry. I just wanted to... 
take your mind off things. It's not your fault. It just suddenly comes back. Dad lying there. Such a horrible thing. Who could have wanted to kill him? Don't you have any idea? No, I don't. I haven't the least idea. You can't think of anyone who held anything against him? Anyone who might have quarreled with him? No. Oh, no. I don't want to talk about it, do you hear? I don't want to discuss it any further. Let's not get upset, honey. We must relax and let me do all the walking. Hmm? I really didn't intend to stay. I, I think I'll be running on. Good night. Good night. Good night, John. Dr. Borden. Evening, Doctor. I see you've been calling on my patient. She's still quite upset. Yeah, poor thing. I've been doing what I can to take her father's place. Feeble gesture, but... Well, I hope you're more of a comfort than I was. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Good evening, Dr. Baden. I was just trying to get our little patient off to sleep. Warm up a glass of milk. That should do the trick. Yes. Well, feeling any better? A little. Nora, when you went through your father's papers, did you find any notes, anything like that? I haven't been back to the house. We had a talk that afternoon. He turned everything over to me. At least he thought he did. You're lying. You quarreled with him. He refused to give you anything. Quarreled? When? When you asked him for the notes. My dear, I, I don't know where you get these ideas. I overheard you. No, I'm a little concerned about you. I hesitate to say this, but it's getting to the point where I can't help you. What you need... What are you trying to do? You and Gwen always telling me I'm imagining things. I don't know what you're up to, but I'll stop you. I'll stop you. Nora, Nora. Is anything the matter? No. I think our patient has a strong tendency towards hysteria. Oh, here's the milk. Now drink this and try to get some sleep. I'll drop in again when you've had a chance to rest. Bring your milk. I don't want it. You better do, honey, what the doctor tells you. He knows best. Does he? I just set out to do the marketing. I couldn't have been gone more than half an hour. I wouldn't worry, Miss Halpin. She's probably just gone for a walk. Yes, I will. Goodbye. with you. It's no use. I can't go on. I'm leaving. What's the matter? I don't know. I, I'm frightened. I, I want to get away. I got a feeling of something closing in on me. You better pull yourself together, Gwen. You're beginning to imagine things. Like Nora.
in there. He got his the same way the doc did. Clawed to death. You say you left everything just as it was? Oh, yes, I took one look at the poor chap and then called you. She can tell you. We met at the street entrance as we arrived this morning and uh, came up here together. Mm -hmm. Look here, Inspector. You've got to do something about this. Miss Runstrom's terrified. Well, I don't mind admitting I am, too. Who knows, but we may be next. Any particular reason why you think so? Yes. What my late colleague and I were doing is highly secret and important, therefore very valuable. The knowledge we were unearthing could be a boon to mankind. On the other hand, in the possession of the wrong people, it could be disastrous. Mm -hmm. Go on. That's all. No suggestions? No. All right. Looks like we'll have to start working nights again. This will take us a month to straighten out. Barbarians, I like to lay my hands on them. No doubt. Hmm. What happened? This is what we found when we came in. You make a guess. You know that foreign character next door? He was croaked last night. Andre? Yeah. Made a pretty messy job of it, too. Where'd this happen? Next door. This doesn't make sense. Murders like this never make sense. Just thought you'd like to know. By the way, it's getting to the point now where I'm going to have to start asking everybody where they were on the moonlit night of the 13th. You know the routine. I always like to see everybody have their alibis handy. Saves a lot of time. Be seeing you. For the last couple of weeks, I've had the feeling I'm being shadowed. Now, I'm sure of it. By that flat foot of one of his friends. I wouldn't be surprised if they were the ones who did this. You don't think they suspect us? Are you kidding? Maybe that was supposed to be shadow boxing, but it sure wasn't fast enough to hide those brass knuckles. Hello. Do you know my lab's been ransacked? How exciting. Were you around last night? Of course not. I just thought you might have been working and heard something. Even if I had, I'd hardly go sticking my neck out after what's happened. Yes, that was pretty horrible. I just heard about it. It's getting too close for comfort. Don't tell me you're getting jittery. Do you think I made of iron? Don't you think that... How stupid of me to bore you with my little fears. They can hardly be of interest after the nightmares dreamed up by little Nora. If you don't mind changing the subject, I'd like to talk about something else. And if you don't mind, I'd like to continue what I have to say. Go on. If you want my honest opinion, I think your poor, weak, supposedly helpless little Nora is more than able to take care of herself. I don't feel safe with her in my apartment anymore. Come now, you can't mean that. That's exactly what I do mean. John, John. I'm sorry for what I said. I, I guess my nerves are all shot. I need you, John. Please don't go. You don't know how sorry I am. It's my fault. I didn't realize it. I, I didn't want to admit it to myself. Don't say any more. I've known it since the first day. I felt that loneliness. I've been trying to fight it, using every means I know to fight it, but I give up.
haven't the slightest idea. The place was turned upside down last night. You'll get it. You'll get it if I have to make it out of my own blood. Never fails. We always get in a rush at the wrong time. Nora, you made that fast. I hurried. You sounded so mysterious and anxious over the phone. What's wrong? I didn't mean to alarm you. Nothing's exactly wrong. I uh, had a talk with Gwen this morning. Oh, I see. Nora, I don't think you ought to stay in her apartment any longer. But I was intending to leave anyway. Did she ask you to tell me? No, it's just my idea. I think you'd be happier someplace else. You're afraid something might happen to me, is that it? You don't need to be afraid. Nothing's going to happen to me. Of course not. I'm no longer troubled. About what? Remember my telling you about Andre's wife? One thing I never told you, though, I, I always thought she died under rather mysterious circumstances. I believed my father used that poor woman as a guinea pig. And that her death was the result of his experiments. That day Andre arrived with the cats. I was afraid he'd come to kill father or me in revenge. Then when father was murdered, I, I was convinced of it. Why didn't you tell the police about all this? Because I had no real proof, and besides... For a while, I even suspected myself. Living all those months with the horrible suspicion that my father was a murderer. Trying to suppress it, especially from him. I was afraid of what it might be doing to me. Nora, who do you believe killed Andre? I don't know. But if whoever killed him killed father, then what I've suspected is wrong. Father never hurt anyone. I, I want to be more sure of that than anything in the world. Oh, John, I don't think I'll ever be afraid again. I've been waiting to hear you say that for a long time. It means I can be honest with you, with everyone, especially with myself. There's only one more thing. What's that? I can't tell you. Not just yet. Huh, why not? There's something I still have to do. Let me help you. It's something I must do myself. You'll be careful. Where will you be staying? I'll be at home. At home? I've lived there ever since I was a little girl. There's nothing there for me to be afraid of. You'll call me if you need me. I will.
still alive. It doesn't matter. Did you ever find those missing notes, my dear? I see, Brendan. Well, I suppose that was best. Gwen felt the same way. She destroyed everything she could this afternoon. Records, formulae, every bit of serum except this. So I killed her. I have something to show you. After all, your father and I worked on it for a long time. It's only right that you should see. A lot of people stood in my way. You, most of all. For your father's sentimental weakening, I blame you. I don't know how much your father told you. Now I never will know. Nor will anyone else. The others who have seen this are dead. <laughs> you and I will be the last. and the police to 4028 Ridgeway Drive. Hurry! Look, John. His hand. The claw. It's gone. What's that? His hand, John. He injected himself with the serum and his left hand turned into a cat's paw. That was the experiment. Please, Nora. Get hold of yourself. You don't... Of course, you wouldn't believe me. But you're wrong, John. I saw it happen. I saw it with my own eyes. Yes, dear. All right, dear. You saw it happen. What happened? There was some shooting, and I got in the way. How did you get here? I saw you come out of his lab, and when I saw what happened in there, I was worried, so I decided to follow you. Sorry I'm late. You never did snoop out that secret, did you? No. Maybe it's just as well. This black devil is everywhere. Did you bring him? No, Borden did. He's the one who's been using the cat for weeks, trying to drive me out of my mind, get me confined to an asylum. Anything to get me out of the way. You ask me, he was just a plain old-fashioned lunatic. Is that for us? I'll let him in. Nora. When you explain to them, remember now, that cat's paw story, you forget about that. It's unimportant. Promise. All right, darling. I promise. I'll forget. Mm -hmm. 